The following program has been edited down from its original length and comes from the DVD, Debunking Evolution. Visit us today to obtain the whole program. Is it just me, or is Dating Rocks not all it's cracked up to be? He's late. Again. Sorry, I am late, Jane. No problem. Oh, you've been jogging? Yeah, I'm trying to get down to weight for the wrestling match this weekend. Okay, well, we'd better get studying. I got one more thing to do. I gotta weigh in. Right now? Yes, right now. I gotta get down below 230 before this weekend. Otherwise, I'll get kicked up to the next weight division and have to face Jimmy the Python Peretti. Jimmy the Python? Yeah, he got his nickname after he squeezed the kid so hard that he was crawling to class for three days. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that. Poor kid. All right. Now, don't drink the water! It'll add water weight! Oh, no, I'll be fine. Oh, no. What's wrong? 245. Oh. 245. Do you know what that means? You know what? You'll be able to get down. Do not worry about it. By Saturday, give me the pipe on here I come. <sighs> I'm sorry, John. Hey, you know, maybe if you just grease yourself down, you'll just slip right out of his hands. No, that's okay. Let's just get back to studying so I can go work out. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna do a little uh, healthy eating myself. Well, if you want to get on the scale, be my guest. In front of you? <laughs> I don't think so. All right, all right. Just offering. Mm -hmm. Phone call. I gotta take this one. Hello, this is John. Sorry about that. We're working on radiometric dating, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Radiometric dating. Jane? Oh, yeah. Sure. I've noticed this is one of the most heated battles, this whole dating issue. Well, that's because time is at the foundation for everything evolutionary theory teaches. Look, just read this section right here. Evolution takes a long time. If life has evolved, then Earth must be very fat. Uh, I mean old. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it says old. Okay, and down here? Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Geologists now use radioactivity to establish the age of certain rocks and fossils. This kind of data could have shown that the Earth is young. If that had happened, Darwin's ideas would have been refuted and abandoned. Instead, radioactive dating indicates the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. Plenty of time for evolution and natural selection to take place. Wow, it seems that the foundation of evolutionary theory sure depends on radiometric dating. Radiometric dating is used to support the belief that millions of years exist for evolution to happen. Yep, and like they said, the entire age of the Earth rests upon radiometric dating. It sure seems that they're putting a lot of faith in something that they can't actually test through direct observation. After all, plenty of assumptions go into these calculations. If it were to be disproved, their whole world view would seem to collapse. Without billions of years, you can't have biological evolution or geological evolution on Earth. Pretty epic, eh? So, based on their dating methods, they've come up with an age for each section of the geologic column that we find on the very next page. And based on that, they determine the age of the Earth to be about 4.5 billion years old. Actually, the age of the Earth is based on the dating of certain meteorites. They assume these meteorites formed at the same time as the Earth and that dating the meteorites will give us the age of the Earth. With that as a start, they then construct the ages of the layers in the column based primarily on the layers of volcanic ash and igneous rock. Cookie, I'm not gonna be- Thanks. Well, so they don't even use rock from Earth. I guess there is another assumption you don't hear about in class. So, for the test, could you remind me about how radiometric dating works? Sure. Can you hand me my water bottle? Wow, this thing's still half frozen. Mm-hmm. Now, 
pretend the water bottle is a rock. Jane, what are you doing? Pretending it's a rock. Okay, well, rocks contain radioactive material called the parent element, or isotope, which decays into a non-radioactive stable product known as the daughter element, or isotope. Okay, I remember now. So, it's like the ice that slowly melts into the water. Yeah. And in the biology book, there's a chart here that shows potassium-40 decaying into argon-40. Okay, I see. So based on how we can measure it today, we assume that every 1.3 billion years, the amount of potassium-40 decreases by half. Right, a radioactive half-life. So when they discover a rock, they can measure the amount of parent material and the amount of daughter product, and using a chart like this, determine how old it is. So what's wrong with this method? <laughs> well, the methods measure only the amounts of isotopes in the rock. This is good science because it is observable and repeatable. It just gives the ratio of one element to another. But the age is an interpretation of those measurements, not an observation. And that interpretation assumes answers to all kinds of untested questions. What if the rock already had a daughter isotope in it from the very beginning? Or what if the rock gets contaminated? Or what if the rate of decay was rattled at some point in the past? What was the original ratio of parent to daughter isotope? One must assume no parent or daughter material was added or removed from the rock and that the rate of decay has always been constant over millions and millions of years. Are those assumptions wrong? I mean, if you start with false assumptions, you could get really bad dates. Well, many scientists think they are, and our textbooks don't even tell us about all the assumptions required to date the rock. But the most convincing evidence is all the crazy dates they get with radioisotope methods. I wonder if our teacher even knows all the assumptions behind radiometric dating. To be fair, there are lots of dates that agree with one another, but there are many examples of different mineral components of a rock giving very different radiometric dates, and very often different isotope systems give different ages for the same rock. So how can you know which one is the right age, if any? And then there are rocks we know the age of, where we watched it cool from lava that give radically older dates. Really? Yeah. A lava flow in a volcano of the North Island of New Zealand that happened in 1954 was dated to be 3.5 million years old. Wow, that's really off. A volcanic bomb that blew out of Mount Stromboli in Italy in 1963 was dated at 2.4 million years old. And that dated much older than it really was. A 10-year-old rock from Mount St. Helens Lava Dome dated to 350,000 years and older. If we can't trust radiometric dating on rocks that we can see formed, then how can we trust radiometric dating on rocks that we can see formed? Rocks that supposedly formed a million years ago. I know, right? And there are so many other examples. Check this out. Okay. What's this? You carry rocks in your backpack while you're jogging? Hey, hardcore. Okay, this rock was taken from the Ono Formation near Redding, California, where millions of sea fossils have been found. This lower Cretaceous rock is supposed to be about 112 million years old, but the marine fossil stuck inside the mud rock, an ammonite, showed 36,000 radiocarbon years. How can a rock be 112 million years old if it holds a fossil of only 36,000 years using a different method. I wonder if either date is meaningful. Seems kind of suspicious to me. The evidence isn't seeming too rock solid. Hmm, funny. Let me see your diamond ring. You mean my purity ring? It's got a diamond on it, doesn't it? Sure, I mean, check it out. Aren't they brilliant? Hey, at the jewelry store, the science said diamonds take billions of years to form deep beneath the earth. I doubt that. Researchers find carbon-14 in diamonds. Why is that important? Radiocarbon decays quickly. It has a half-life of only about 5,730 years. So its maximum shelf life is only about 100,000 years before it becomes undetectable. And it might be impossible to contaminate an old diamond with young carbon. Wow, so those diamonds must be younger than they think. So here's the real question. Why are any of these examples in our textbook? Hmm. Well, I should get back to working out and... What? <laughs> this scale is reading an extra 15 pounds on it. What?
this scale is evil! Calm down. It just wasn't calibrated, okay? See? Okay. All right, 229. Safe. Hey, that's kind of like radiometric dating. Maybe everyone's been trusting that it's accurate, but it's been giving them false numbers. With all the overwhelming evidence that it doesn't work consistently, I'm surprised that they present it with such confidence in our textbooks. Jane, it goes back to the original quote we read in the book. If they're wrong about dating rocks, then the entire evolutionary theory crumbles to pieces. That's true. None of us were there to verify the assumptions. But God has provided a written account of history. And if you tally up all the chronologies and time cues in the Bible, the earth is about 6,000 years old. So we trust God's word instead of man's fallible dating methods. It's like it says in Job 38, 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. <laughs> it's like God saying, you weren't there. <laughs> kind of makes you think, doesn't it? This program is brought to you by Awesome Science Media, an organization committed to producing high-quality science-focused television content, all from a biblical worldview. Be sure to sign up for our email newsletter to find out about our new titles and get deals on our content. To learn more about who we are, visit our website and online store at awesomesciencemedia.com. You can now get access to all of our programming on our video-on-demand platform at AwesomeSciTV.com with a low monthly subscription rate of $4.99. And for a limited time, the first seven days are free, so you can check us out before you commit. Subscribe today and get access to every episode and documentary we have produced. Not only will you get access to all of our programs, but every behind-the-scenes video, blooper reels, interview clips, scientist testimony, producer video blog, on-site production previews, and spherical production videos. Awesome Sci TV will also be the place where we release our newest content, so you'll be the first in the world to see our newest episodes and documentaries. We're always producing content, so new titles will be added as soon as we release them. No matter where you live on the globe, if you have internet, you can subscribe to Awesome Sci TV. So what are you waiting for? Check us out today. Sign up for a seven day trial. You'll have the choice to sign up for our monthly package or save money by signing up for our yearly subscription. But if you don't want to subscribe, Awesome Sci TV also offers each title for rent or for purchase. View our content from our website or download it to your computer or mobile device when you purchase it. It's easy to access any of our titles. Get all of our great programming and build up your faith in God's Word. Remember, for a limited time, you can sign up for a seven-day free trial. Go to AwesomeSciTV.com to sign up now. Is it just me? Or can things that evolutionists claim take long amounts of time actually happen very quickly? I got the new case. I got the heavy duty one. The heaviest duty one on the market. You could roll a truck over this baby. I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> Hadn't put yes. it on yet. Had not put it on yet. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, you, you didn't. Oops. Oh man. What normal person throws a phone? Well, I never said I was normal. Okay, I'm so sorry. Puppy dog guys. Well, you know, I'm not like upset, upset. I was expecting a call from the scholarship board today. The process takes months and if they can't contact me, it's just gonna be that much longer. We can do this, we can fix this. We just have to put the pieces back on the screen and then use this shipping tape to put it all back together. Not gonna work. Yes, it will, yes, it will. Who knew a phone could shatter so completely? <sighs> this is a nightmare. No, it isn't. No, look, we can do this. We can do this. We almost got it done. See? Look. 
Ah, uh, here's Australia. <laughs> okay, look, that can go there. And then look, we already have Africa. North America. Yes, see? Now look, soon enough we'll have Pangea, and then your phone will be able to work. Pangea? You mean the supercontinent? Yeah, I was just reading about it for this week's homework. Let's see, it was page 162. Now, right here, they believe all the continents were together to form Pangea 225 million years ago. But not everyone agrees, right? True. Thousands of scientists believe in fast continental sprint rather than slow continental drift. One famous scientist by the name of Dr. John Baumgartner created a computer model for plate tectonics that thousands of geophysicists use to investigate Earth processes. His model has given us an understanding of how the continents split apart thousands, not millions, of years ago. Oh yeah, isn't he the creator of Terra? Yep. In 1997, the U.S. News and World Report reported Terra was created by a Los Alamos lab scientist, the world's preeminent expert in the design of computer models for geophysical convection. The process by which the Earth creates volcanoes, earthquakes, and the movement of the continental plates. Didn't he show that they can also move very quickly? Right, but because the theory of evolution takes a long period of time to supposedly happen, many only accept uniformitarian ideas. Uniform a who? Oh, uh, it defines it right here. Let's see. Geologists make inferences based on the principle of uniformitarianism. This principle states that the same processes that operate today operated in the past. So they can determine the rate at which a river is currently cutting through a canyon and then use that to determine how old it is? Correct. But what this principle refuses to take into account is the major catastrophic events of the past. Even many evolutionary geologists are starting to recognize the importance of regional catastrophes in understanding the geologic features on Earth. Ooh. I think this might be the scholarship board. Quick, hand me South America. Here. All right, here we go, ready? Done, go. Please work, please work. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, I was calling to let you know your hearing aids are in. What? I said your hearing aids are in. Oh, you've got the wrong number. So, I'm guessing that wasn't the scholarship board? Nope, I probably missed their call. Now I'm not gonna hear back from them for weeks or months. Well, at least your phone works. Okay. So, our textbooks say that rock layers take a long time to form. Have you heard about Mount St. Helens? Yeah. Okay, well, during the 1980s eruptions at Mount St. Helens, 200 layers of rock were deposited in three hours. Entire river systems were carved in a matter of months, right through 700 feet of hard rock. <laughs> Examples like this cause geologists to rethink some of their previous ideas and give biblical creationists great models for the flood of Noah's day. So imagine what a worldwide flood would do. Exactly. So, here it says, these rock layers in the Grand Canyon were laid down over millions of years and were then slowly washed away by the river, forming a channel. That's uniformitarian thinking again, isn't it? Yup. If these rock layers took millions of years to form, then the bottom rock layers would be hard and brittle by the time the ones at the top would be deposited. But near Grand Canyon, all the layers are bent together. If they were bent together, well, they were hard. Snap. The rocks didn't shatter like they should have. They must have been bent together while they were soft and pliable. The whole stack. That means they were all deposited at about the same time not over millions of years. So what about the canyon itself? Well, if the river slowly carved the canyon, then we should see all the material piled up in a river delta, but it's completely missing. In fact, about 1,000 cubic miles has been eroded to form the Grand Canyon. Where did it all go? If the canyon was slowly eroded by the Colorado River, an enormous delta should be found at the mouth of the river where it empties into the Gulf of California. But the delta only contains about 1% of the eroded material we would expect if the evolutionary explanation were true. Unless it was carved by a massive catastrophe, which carried all the material away. That's what I think. Check out what it says about fossils. 
in our biology book. Even if an organism lives in an environment where fossils can form, the chances are slim that its dead body will be buried in sediment before it decays. So, animals have to be quickly buried in sediment so its cells can be preserved and then replaced by the surrounding minerals. Okay, so check out this fossilized clam. You have fossilized clams in your purse. Yeah, they hurt my pocket. Anyway, so what happens to a clam when it dies? No more homework? No. They open up and their two shells separate. But this clam was fossilized before it had a chance to fall open or be pulled open by a scavenger. They've also found fossils of a fish coming out of another's mouth. How quickly did that get fossilized? Not fast enough. Or what about a marine reptile caught giving birth? Awkward. Yeah. And they found many dinosaur bones with red blood cells, soft tissue, proteins, and even DNA. How quickly would that have to be buried before it deteriorated? And have it last for 70 million years? There's no way. But all of these could have been fossilized during the worldwide flood. Right. Noah's flood would create many of the rock layers that stretch over entire continents and bury millions of creatures for us to find as fossils today. It doesn't take millions of years to form fossils. It can happen rapidly under the right conditions. I guess it all comes down to what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they will willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. They deny the worldwide flood. <clears throat> yes, this is John. Really? 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 All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll talk to you then. Guess who that was? That was the scholarship board. Did that go well? Yes! Yes! I got the scholarship. I thought I was gonna have months of paperwork. And I just got it, just like that. Oh, congratulations, John! Yeah, <laughs> I guess things you think are gonna take a really long time can sometimes happen very rapidly. Yep, kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Is it just me, or does a 100-pound wolf-like creature turning into a 360,000-pound blue whale seem a little hard to believe? Who's got you covered? Oh, you got burgers. Oh man, I love you. Yeah, well I figured that since we're gonna be studying anyways. Oh yeah, pretty much. All right, let's see what you got here. Uh, we got the old macaroni fries. <gasps> we got some burgers. Silverware? For hey. burgers? I don't know, the girl who was giving all this stuff out was like a zombie. <laughs> so, you know what's gonna be on this test, right? Yeah, whale evolution. Can you imagine what it would take for a wolf-like creature to turn into a whale? The little tail would have to turn into a gigantic fluke and the forelimbs would have to turn into flippers. They would need to evolve a brand new respiratory system. I mean, that's not easy. And then they would have to evolve a blowhole. And then their teeth would have to evolve into baleen. And that's not all. Way too many changes that would have to be made. Including growing several hundred times bigger. <laughs> yeah, like Aunt Madge during Christmas. Yeah, so we're gonna have to study. I mean, if we don't, this test is gonna be an epic fail. Hey, you know what I'm thinking? That we're really living on a snowflake in Whoville. No, but cramming all these facts into our heads makes me feel like we're some sort of contestants on Jeopardy. Welcome to Evolutionary Jeopardy. The game where you never know how things will turn out. Jane, pick your category. Mm, I'm gonna go for, 
We have a tail for 500. Okay, this category focuses on different animals that supposedly evolved into modern whales. From the high school biology textbook, we see the first animal believed to begin evolving into whales. It says, Masani kids are one hypothesized link between modern whales and certain hoofed animals. Oh, what is the imagined uh, category of animals that includes sheep, camels, pigs, cows, deer, and wolves thought to be the possible ancestors of whales? That is correct! Wait, the entire evolutionary ancestry of whales is based on an imaginary creature? Yeah. That's true. Hi, I'm Kyle Justice of Awesome Science Media. I'm glad you're watching our programs. I hope you've been ministered to. Some of you might feel called to give towards our ministry to help us produce even more great programming. I'm going to show you how. We've tried to be creative in the way we partner with our viewers, so we've set up a special producer's website just for you. Similar to crowdfunding, we have partnered with Patreon, a site that helps support us as content creators on a monthly basis. By giving, you become a producer with us. As a thank you for your support, we have set up several rewards depending upon how much you'd like to give. From exclusive access to extra content, a first look at our new programs, behind the scenes specials, to special one-on-one -on -one monthly hangouts with our hosts and experts. We wanna thank you in some big ways. So here's how it works. Go to our website at awesomesciencemedia.com and select the special Become a Producer icon at the top. You can watch the introduction video first. Then on the right, you'll see various giving levels and what rewards you'll receive. Pick one and the website will lead you through the sign-up process. Then more than once a month, you'll get email notifications when the rewards are available. You can even give as little as $1 a month. By becoming one of our producers, you'll be able to help us produce even more great programming every month. We'll reach the world with the message of our great creator. Thank you for your help and support. We look forward to partnering with you.